Alhamdulillah for the holy month of Safar, inshaAllah Safar khair. <coughs> what we have then when we go to the month, the app is one few days behind maybe, a day behind. Go for the month of Safar is the reality of 18, the nine and the second lunar month and the name of Prophet Rasulul Rahmah, the Prophet of mercy and the 18th name of Allah Al-Fatah, the opener. So alhamdulillah this is the opening of Rahmah. The 18th surah is the Surat Al-Kahf and the companions of the cave and the immense importance of running to the cave of safety, the realities of A'udhu Billah and the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah that Allah address us by the immensity of this holy month and under Nur Muhammadi the light in which Prophet is eternally being dressed by Allah that dhikr and that praise, SubhanAman huwa alimun hakeem, SubhanAman alimun hakeem. Glory be to the all-knowing and the wise. So ilm and hikmah, knowledge and wisdom is a gift that Allah to dress as a reality upon the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and the reality of this holy month. The parda is I believe the parda of Hayba. Does it have here on this hand of grandeur? And because of the tajalli of the month, and the realities of entering the cave, the realities of knowledge and wisdom that it has a heavy tajalli of haybah and majestic might. And inshaAllah Allah dress the souls from the immensity of that reality and from Nashbandiya secrets asking Sayyidina Abu Ahmad al sughuri from the Nashbandi silsila to help us in that haiba and in that majestic dress of Allah and to reduce so that to the ability of our ability to carry that dress and not to be overwhelming. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And too much for people that it would cause difficulty. So always remember Sayyidina Sultanul Awliya Abu Ahmad al sughuri like they just recited at the Sallallahu Siru and that we give water for their sake, we recite Surah Fatiha for their sake give food in their name, that their nazar in His holy nazar be upon us, our families, our loved ones, our community in this holy month to achieve what Allah wants us to achieve so that the tajalli of hayba and majesty to be sufficiently dressed upon us and not overwhelm the person and insan. And this is a, the month of the cave and alhamdulillah that the reminder for myself is that it's not an easy path. So all of the teachings are real <clears throat> and it's not a philosophy that when they teach these testings, these, these adabs and manners it's real 
that it's, it's going to occur in our life and these are opportunities for growth. These are opportunities for Allah to dress us from His gifts, without the testing there's no dressing. So this is Allah's blessing to give His servants imtihan and tests so that to dress them. And just a simple reminder because of this month, the companions of the cave that when they followed their leadership and the king of that time decided that not only would he be the authority but he would call himself divine and that a human would be divine and God and fitna of all of this understanding which is now upon the earth. They're awaiting a, a man who calls himself God and they say that he's God coming. And all the same fitna, same characteristics, same ideology that anytime you call a man divine and godly as if he's Allah astaghfirullah making a, a shirk and Allah in the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf describes that, that uh, don't attribute children to the Creator. That he begets not nor is he begotten, he doesn't have progeny and he doesn't sire birth, he doesn't give birth to children. This is not something small but Allah says, this is enormous. So this is an enormous battle against the Divine, it's not something small. So this type of mentality that has now resurfaced on this earth that people went from being prophets and described as prophets that they describe now as a creator and God Himself in person. So this is the same situation that happened for us Ashabul Kahf is happening now upon the dunya and Allah describes that they took off, ran and they ran to seek a shelter seeking Allah's rahmah and mercy. But before we go into the whole situation of the cave, a reminder was for myself is that they were accompanied by a dog and their loyal and faithful dog was following them. And they thought that the dog would give them away and as a result We've said many years and this is always an interesting reminder because we don't really think that this will happen to ourselves in life is that they threw rocks at the dog that, go away, go away, throw rocks, go away, go away, that you'll give us away. And they threw for so many times until Allah gave the dog an ability in which the dog was not leaving and persistent in following and accompanying these sleepers of the cave and sleepers of this reality. And Allah gave the dog a tongue in which it at that time stood up and said that, I will not stop following you and that I will be of service to you, that I will serve the Creator by serving you. And this was a, a big reality for tariqahs. Because it's not easy to listen to sobats and think that you're going to be Ashab al Kaf. Because people, if they're right minded and logical, they would understand that that's a very high station, that's not something easy to achieve. But what Allah gave for us is that a dog that's not necessarily. the most exciting animal that one could wish for to be, Allah gives and says, no this dog by being loyal achieved immense stations. Because later when we go into Ashab al-Kaf the dog was guarding the gateway and if anyone who came to approach the mere sight of the dog because this is the month of Haiba. So all of these are like beads and a tasbih that come together, that the persistence of the dog 
And every ruqh that came to the dog gave a dress to the dog. And what was the dress? Was the haybah of this month. What Prophet received of haybah in this holy month, this is a tajalli that will be inherited to creation if they become patient and persevere through difficulty. So this is the, 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 the way of sabirin, this is the way of the people of khuluq and good character that the dog had every right to attack them. So he could have shown an identity and imagine if you throw a dog at a rock at a dog at your neighbor's dog most likely he will jump the fence and come after you. So <laughs> that's not the dog that you want to be in a cave with. So it shows also something that uh, when you test somebody you see that this is not the character I would want to be in a cave with because this person going to eat me, this dog, this creature is going to attack me. And that's what Allah wanted to show on every side. The sleepers that don't worry, look how you're throwing rocks, this creature has no intention of eating you in your sleep. It has an aramesh, it has a, a peaceful tranquil reality towards you and at the same time Allah described it later in His service to the cave has haybah. That anyone just approached near the cave it was like a lion that they were immensely fearful and would run away. So we can only imagine when Allah's describing Hayba and uh, majesty how terrifying it must have been for people. Just the thought of, oh if we go there that's terrifying, well, no way are we going to go there. And that was only from rocks. So it means that Allah gives to the servant that they don't have to be very high station people but anybody, anybody has a way towards this reality. Doesn't matter where they come from, what background they come from, like the people who sat in the zikr for just five minutes and received all the blessings of the holy hadith. This is the immensity of God's rahmah and mercy but all that He asks of us is this good character. So that tariqah is built on this foundation, why? Because you're not trying to find students who are going to be Ashab al kat The shaykh's not looking for fellow shaykhs, he's not looking for competition in shaykhs but he's looking to gather people whom have good character. So then Allah throws rocks at them so that to show, look if this one gets tested, they're extremely dangerous. So means this is how we bring back every teaching, how do we use that now, right now in our life? And that's the immensity of these stories, that this reality is based on manners, that anyone can achieve it. If the dog got in, everybody can get in. But we must have at least the character of the dog in which we are tame, that we are humble, that we don't use our strength and our ability to attack our master and those whom we serve. That's the reality of this path and as a result of every ruqh that comes in our direction because everyone is a student on the path whether you're the teacher one day and next day to other people you're just a student because they're attacking you. It never ends, there's never a station you reach where nobody attacks you, outside people will attack you. But you still required the same characteristic that be patient Allah will raise you. If they insult you Allah will raise you, if they took away your right Allah will raise you. Because you don't want the rights from people, you don't want to be right in the eyes of people they can't do anything for you, they can't give you, they can't enrich you and they can't impoverish you. They can only say what they want to say but in tawakkul and complete reliance upon Allah is only Allah For if Allah is not happy with you, He can impoverish you in an instant, make you poor as poor can be. He can make you as sick as sick can be, He can take everything away. So means the only one to fear is Allah 
and that's why they teach that to the student and for themselves. So we, we have good character, we've been tested inshaAllah, they test us, we try our best to always remember we're being tested and as a result those tests, those difficulties that come they're like loaded flowers. They hit you hard but they're filled with beatific essences from Divinely Presence is the only way to describe it. At that time all you can think of bitterness because severe testing has happened and all you can think of is bitterness but as a result of these testings Allah raises darajat, grants haybah, grants lights and blessings and everything that, that the students are, are interested in achieving Allah's ridha and satisfaction. Which all of that brings us to the nearness of Sayyidina Muhammad And this is a, is a real path, means it happens at every single moment. Now imagine then in our interaction that the shaykh has a, a, a big garden of people and those whom their life is a khidmat, means there are people whom from outside they participate. There are people whom from outside that they outside participate and they donate. That in itself is a huge khidmat because they provide the, the fuel for the entire engine to move. And then there are people whom they actually do the services and the day to day. Either way it's like a garden. And if anyone has traversed a rose garden because they are the Gulu Muhammadi they're the, the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Every garden has thorns. So the manners is why they're teaching. So people have to be clever. If we talk about rocks you say, well it wasn't a rock, well, it doesn't matter what it was. Because anytime you enter into these gardens and you deal with the students of the shaykhs they are like the, the roses and they have many thorns on them because they're not purified. And as a result of your interaction with each other you're going to get pricked, these thorns are going to hit you, they're going to cause difficulty and pain upon you like anyone going through. It's at that very moment that Prophet is observing. That very moment because when Prophet observes, now Allah is observing because this is the holy hadith, I'll be the seeing in which you see. If imagine if those eyes go to your attention, means you, you went into the garden and now you drew blood, you hit a thorn. And as a result of your hitting the thorn your character comes out and all your actions start to come out. But they're watching because you're in their garden. That's why the tariqah is based on manners, this is the whole Ashab al kaf People say, well I wasn't walking in a desert and somebody threw a rock at me, it doesn't have to be. These are the analogies of being tested, the shaykh has a garden. Anybody who's ever gone into a garden is going to be filled with thorns because the roses beautific as they may be, fragrant as they may be are filled with difficulties. It's that very interaction that the shaykhs are teaching people, be careful, be careful. When you walk through this garden remember the manners. Then imagine you come into that garden and you start because you've got a little bit of a prick on you you start to tear down the flower, start to rip it apart and start to bang it around everywhere. Then you can see that's probably not the best characteristic to have in a rose garden, right? Our life was about the subtlety of our character and nature. If we go through this garden like a bulldozer, just plow everything down, we achieve nothing and we're wasting our time. The adab of the tariqah is the 
very importance that they teach, be careful. In this garden you may cut yourself, your interaction with somebody may be very unpleasing to you. But these people serve and as a result Allah wanted that thing to be unpleasing to see what the characteristic would be. <coughs> Means that we have to know that we're going to be tested. And as a result of being tested then the perfected characters are the ones who traverse the garden, they get plucked, they get scraped, they get many different things and they remain quiet. And say, Alhamdulillah, I got through a difficulty through these Muhammadan flowers. Alhamdulillah by means of this difficulty Allah must have taken something away from me, taken difficulties away from me and raised me and, and grant, granted me gifts and lights and blessings. Everything is under their observation and any imtihan that comes we take to our, our hearts and ourselves and say, Alhamdulillah Allah wanted to take away a difficulty and we remain silent about that. We don't try to rip apart the garden and we don't interact with other people about, I got cut in that garden. Because if I walk through the garden and I got cut and I want to now tell 10 other people, I just got cut on that flower, now you're backbiting in that garden. And again now you brought very bad and bad characteristics into that garden. Because as you backbite you're now as if again you're ripping apart the whole garden. The one who listens to it is as bad as the one whom is speaking it. Because the one listening loves gossip and wants to hear all bad things and that's a bad characteristic. That if somebody talked about my shaykh I probably would have beat them up. So I didn't want to listen to anyone talking bad or complaining about anything. That was the teaching where we don't want to be somebody who listens to bad because you won't find a shortage of people who want to fill the ears with bad. Means the delicacy of the character is so essential in this garden. We hear no bad, we see no bad and we speak no bad. And anybody who has a problem in that garden deals directly with help me at nurmuhammad.com. That's exactly why they created that. Not so people backbite to each other because as soon as you talk about somebody saying, I got hurt on that bush, you backbited them and you slandered them. And now you're creating this immense fitna within this garden. And that's not the adab of tariqah, especially this is the holy month of Safar and Allah wants to, to give the dress of haybah and these beatific lights. So always a reminder for myself that this nothing is nothing. In our training we would actually go into association, somebody would call me a moron. Another person working in the office would call me an idiot. Then I would go into the internet somebody would say this and somebody would say that and your training was remain silent. We never, never in our life would dare to go and tell Mawlana anything and to give it and yell at him about this or verbally put out this about this. It wasn't the tariqah because this was a representative of the ears and the eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad So it means we took it upon ourselves that day, what can we do? Be patient, be patient, be patient and as a result of at least attempting to good, have good manners, we got to where we had to get to. But in today's world everybody wants to immediately take their right and forget that they are in tariqah and say this and that and from every direction this person say this and even the bearer of bad news before they would shoot. If you brought bad news to the king most likely you would have gotten shot. Don't be the one who brings any news or bad news to anyone. Everything has to always be pleasant, everything has to be always filled with love and goodness and good character. Means these are the, the adabs of the reality of tariqah, especially in the month of Safar opening is the reminder. <coughs>
this is a rose garden. Of course you're going to get all sorts of cuts because every beatific rose has many thorns. But how we traverse is going to be the importance of our tariqa life and the ability to achieve. Remember it's not a prison sentence where you serve 30 years or 40 years because what can be achieved in one year, it can be one year. But if you don't learn it can be 90 years you sit there and nothing happens. Means this is the importance is that to achieve maturity, to achieve the understanding and the reality and the khuluq that by the virtue of beatific character. Beatific is… beatific only comes through difficulty, not through, not through ease. Somebody who never gets agitated by anybody or never puts themselves in a position to be agitated is not a beatific character, just a hiding character. The, the one that achieves beatific is the one is continuously getting scraped and squeezed and crushed because it's only through these crushings and squeezings that it becomes polished like a gemstone. So Mawlana would describe, you know, you put charcoal under enormous amount of heat and what happens? Eventually with their technology now they understood how to make charcoal into diamonds. And then once you have this big bulky diamond after immense pressure and heat, pressure and heat, imtahan. Then what Allah does with those, those stones? He starts chopping at them because who wants a big stone like this with a whole bunch of imperfections? You start chopping away at it, chopping away at it. You take chunks of it out until you have two, three, four carat of a very precious pure stone. We pray that Allah make us to be precious and pure and to have an immense character. And anytime we do wrong that we correct ourselves, we make our tawbah, we ask Allah for forgiveness. And then we put a post-it note somewhere in our room and our environment that we want to be from Ashab al-Kahf and that we understand our life is filled with difficulties and rocks and rocks are flying at us from every direction and everywhere is a, is a garden filled with thorns. When we interact with our own tariqah family it's definitely going to be roses with lots of thorns. So much so one time you may think you're holding a rose and it just they pull from your hand it's all thorns. So the tariqah's testings are, are not easy but always is a reminder for ourselves and myself so that Allah to raise us, dress us and bless us. Upon Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amin Yaseepoon, As-Salaamun Al-Mursaleen, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al-Mustafa, Bi Siri Surat Al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.